In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a recovery of a bricked Wise V2, otherwise known as a Neo Smart Cam. Let's get started. All right, well, let's get started. So, to do this process, you need, of course, your cam. In this case, this is a Wise Cam V2. It's exactly the same hardware as the Neo Smart Cam. You're going to need a small Phillips screwdriver with a pointy tip. And you're going to need some sort of either really thin flathead, or if you have one of those flat bladed tools that they use for opening cell phones and such, you can use one of those. Anything that's very thin and flat. So on top of that, you're also going to need a USB A to A cable. And this is going to be for the actual flashing part. And you're going to need a Windows system running cloner or a Linux system running cloner if you have one. I have another video on setting up cloner on Windows, so definitely make sure that you check that out. I'm not going to repeat those steps here. So we've got our camera here and we have to open this guy up and it's pretty easy to do. You fold the foot out of the way and then there are two small Phillips screws. So we're going to go ahead and take those out. Screw number one. Screw number two. Now to get the foot off, we just put something to make a gap in this seam and we'll use our little flathead screwdriver and then the thing more or less just pops out. So we'll take screwdriver, we're going to make a bit of a gap And that's it, that guy's out. So now what we need to do is we need access to the back here. That's where the flash chip is. And to do that, you can kind of pull apart with your thumbs on these two corners and it should release these plastic tabs. Let's give it a try. Just like so. Now this does have the speaker attached on a cord so don't pull it too hard and pull that now we're going to look inside gonna try and zoom in here for you and you see this guy right here this is the flash chip and it has eight pins this is pin one the pin numbering goes counterclockwise, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And part of the process we're going to do involves shorting pin five and pin six. You can do that with a screwdriver like this or anything else metal. You don't short any of the other pins, just those two, and it's just going to be for a couple of seconds. But we're going to do essentially what I'm doing right here. So our next step we're going to do is getting set up with cloner software. Not sure you'll be able to see what's happening on my laptop here, but we'll set it up kind of. So let me get cloner open. And first thing we do is we go into config, make sure platform is T and you have T20 selected. And for the board, you want T20 SFC nor writer full. Then you go over to the policy tab and you want to make sure the attribute is set to your correct firmware file. Now, if you don't know 
which variant of this camera you have, you can just go ahead and install one of them. And if you don't have a actual video feed, an image, then you have the wrong one. And you can either repeat the same process or you can do a edit over SSH to get the correct firmware file. So we're gonna go ahead and select that one. We're going to hit save. Do you want to save? Yes. And we're going to hit start. So now Cloner is waiting for an Ingenic device to show up in bootloader mode. Now I don't know what's on this camera right now. It might be factory firmware. It might be thin Geno. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter because what we're going to do is we're going to trick it into thinking that there's nothing on the flash. When we short those two pins at boot up, the processor goes out to look for the bootloader. And if it doesn't find one, it goes into its USB recovery mode. So this is one where you kind of need three hands because you need to hold the camera down, you need to short the pins, and you need to plug your USB cord in. So I'm going to show how that process is done and try and get this laptop where you can sort of see it. But I don't think you'll be able to read it. You'll be able to see activity. So we're going to take our screwdriver, going to put it kind of between pins five and six, and we're just gonna give it no pressure, but we're just going to rotate it so that both sides are touching the legs. And with that in place, we're going to just plug it right in. There we go. And three seconds later, you let go. Now, if we did it right, there we go. Cloner is now seeing the device we have some movement happening there and it is flashing right now it's actually erasing the existing whatever is on the flash chip it zeroes the whole thing out and that takes about 30 seconds or so to do before it starts programming the new firmware into it so we'll just speed this part up all right and now we are actually writing the new firmware now, if you don't get the erasing happening within about, we'll say 10 seconds of after you remove the short from the chip, you probably didn't have it shorted right, or maybe you held it a little too long. So go ahead and just unplug the camera, get your short set up again, and plug it back in, give it another go. All right, so the flash process has completed. That was very fast. And now the camera has the Thingino firmware. So we'll go ahead and unplug it here. And real quick, just show you how to reassemble it. So you have the USB port, and that's at the bottom here. So we're putting the back piece on first, and it just kind of snaps in. So far so good. Then we're going to take the base and make sure the SD card slot is lined up with the slot on the device itself, which is right there. And we just pop it in like so. And then we've got our two screws. My fingers are too big for little screws. And there we go. We have a reassembled cam 
as good as new. Looks like it's never been touched by anything. Now, one thing a lot of people may not have is a USB A to A cable. These are fairly common, but they're definitely not as common as the USB A to other types. So if you guys want, let me know and I can make a video on how to take two other USB cables and make one USB A to A cable out of it. It's really simple. A bunch of members on our Discord have done it. So our next thing we're going to do is power this camera up. So let me get a micro USB and plug it right in. So on the first boot, it takes an extra 30 seconds or so to get some things set up. And then it reboots itself. And we're just waiting for it to come back up from there. All right, now I'm just checking our Wi-Fi list. We have the Thingino setup network so we'll go ahead and connect to that that'll bring us to the config portal where you're able to enter in if you want to change the host name which you probably don't you put in your root password which is what you use to access it through the web interface or over ssh and then you put in your wi-fi credentials do that hit save it gives you a confirmation page hit the confirm button there and it'll reboot the device and should come up on your network. All right, well, that's it. This device, we just took it from bricked to totally working and just fine. So that's one more device running Thingino. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. If you're interested in IP cameras and hardware hacking and things like that, definitely check us out over on our Discord. The link is down below. If you're looking for a actual high-end camera that will run on Thingino that has far better quality than anything you'll get from Wise, check out the link in the description for the Wook camera. So put any questions or comments you might have down in the section below. I'll definitely check it out and hope to see you in the next video. Until then, Stay fresh, cheese bags.